All right guys, Jameson and Alex here today. We're gonna to be doing a quick overview of the yes. new Strixhaven curriculum of chaos book that just came out. Just going over all the chapters, what's in the book, yeah. if it's worth getting as a player, as a DM, our thoughts on the Unrest Arcana shenanigans. Which will be uh, all of a that. meat of the discussion involved here, I think for sure. <laughs> so we'll try to jump straight into this, guys. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe yes. to be entered for the D&D Beyond Players Bundle giveaway. Mm. And also have to say it as well, we are have this video is sponsored by Hit Point Press. Ah. Riffin the Ash Knight calls upon your aid to save Humblewood. With scores of villages lost to the spreading flames, a small but mighty group of heroes is needed to restore balance to the wood. Will you answer the call? Riffin is available now as an adorable plushie. For a limited time, save ten dollars by bundling this squishable friend with either the Humblewood book or box set. Order before December nineteenth and use code free ship at checkout to receive free shipping to the US and Canada on orders of $100 or more of in-stock items and to guarantee shipping in time for Christmas. Stay heroic and get yours today at hitpointpress.com slash humblewood. So, all that being said, we're going to jump straight into it, guys. Strixhaven, Curriculum of Chaos. Yes. I have some interesting thoughts on this. I'm um, sure you do. <laughs> I don't know how much I want to beat around the bush, but... <laughs> Not really. I will just say... we got time for that. I'll, I'll, I'll cut straight to the point here that I'm... A little bit disappointed, not going to lie. Sure, I get I feel that. like a lot of the character stuff was cut from the mm -hmm. book when they, they axed the subclasses. Axed? In, well, we'll, 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 we'll put that on <laughs> yeah. pause for a, a second. Effectively, they did ax the subclasses because there aren't subclasses in the book. Right. Effectively. And of this book, there are seven chapters, one of which is dedicated to... The lore, yeah. specifically, of Strixhaven, which is a magical university yes. kind of deal. I mean, it's it's, hog, five, it's Hogwarts in D&D's realm. I mean, kind you of. have your five different <laughs> schools, Lorehold, Prismari, Quandrix, Silverquill, and Witherbloom, which were, the school was founded by five ancient dragons. wonder what their names are. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have chapter two, which is your character options. Which originally should have been... A significantly higher percentage of the book, yeah. but it's cut down significantly because those those uh, subclasses aren't in there. Instead, you do get one race, which is the Allen, which is actually from I believe the Fey on yep. Arthur Arcana, the Wild, yep. that got rolled into this book, uh, which changes, which will, yeah, which will change, which will obviously well, we'll we, cover. Have, we have enough discussion on that in and of itself. So yeah, that'll, be, right. that'll be a video, um, you know, and then. What they did with the subclasses, and they get rid of the subclasses, and they kind of reworked them from scratch and created these scaling feats out of the yeah. subclasses to a certain extent. Because like, instead of being each one of the colleges is a subclass originally that could have gone between like two or three different right. base classes, they essentially made a feat that fits with each of the of the, of the school the colleges. Yes. Uh, so that's completely different. Yeah, and that's an interesting concept. Yes. Again, that's a whole big I, discussion there. We're yeah. trying to keep this overview more yeah. broad, so we will do specific videos on these topics yeah. for the most part. But yeah, you have the backgrounds, which kind of ties with feats because you get yeah. there's there's feats that you can get separate that are also tied to the right. colleges. But right. the background gives you the feat. Yeah. So. I don't that, know, yeah, that, take that's background? a bit wild. <laughs> yeah, like it's one thing. Like, the only thing to have the feats that scale, which I really do like the idea of, uh, but to have the feats be awarded by the background, that's a bit bonkers. Uh, and then the last couple things with the character options is there are five new spells to the book, I believe, or six. Yeah, five. Five and spells. I really thought we would see a much higher spell count in this book with it being yeah. a. Magical university, even if it was more on the lower end of stuff, it's one level one and four level two spells, and that's it. Yeah. I expected to see a ton of lower level spells, right? And at least some fours and fives, and maybe a couple sixes in there. If you get anything, you know, gargantuanly huge seven, eight, nines, I expected yeah, to see sure. at least 20 or so yeah, new spells you would in this think book. With having a whole setting based on a school of magic, that you would be adding a whole bunch of new spells, but and even if they are, you know, aren't all. Really interesting, and even if it's just if it's just some fun spells in there. There's a couple of spells in here that I could say, okay, you could have some fun with this spell that you use. The ones they did add in the book, um, having more spells like that that are more adventuring and RP stuff that be everyday use that would be good lower level spells for a student of magic to right, learn. Kind right. of thing, you know, thematically it would make sense for there to be a bunch of level, you know, cantrips level ones and level twos in there. 
Yeah, so not super thrilled about that either, which we will do a video going over all the spells as well. Um, and then they had magic items, which you think also. Oh, <laughs> magic school, there's going to be lots of magic items. Yeah. There's ten. There's ten, but of those ten... <laughs> Half of them are the same thing. One of them is a spell scroll, and one of them is a plus one weapon. So, so there's, there's eight, eight, and five of the remaining are, a, are the same thing, just themed with one for each of the colleges. Yeah, they just so, have like a slightly different flavor to them. Yep. So there's really not and a and I do there. but I do like those magic items. So specifically, yeah, those sure. those are really cool and they're well designed magic items. And there's a couple other fun ones in there, but that list is real short too. Yeah, which is unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. So then you might be wondering, well, if there's no character options, then what is in this book? Well, yes. there are seven chapters total, and you have chapters three, four, five, and six which are dedicated to story adventures. Mm -hmm. So they made it in a way, I guess, that you can split it up into smaller segments so you don't have to run them all back to back to back, which right. you can. Sure. If you do start at in Chapter 3, it's going from Level 1, and then it ends at Level 4. Yeah. And then uh, Chapter 4, you're going from Level 4, and then it ends when you hit Level 6. And then mm -hmm. Chapter 5 is from starts at 6, ends at 8, and then the whole... Adventure ends in chapter six, where you end at level ten. Well, you get to hit level ten, and there's some things after that. Yeah. Uh, but you maybe between ten and eleven ish. Yeah, somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 it's yeah. interesting that it does split it up like that because it almost encourages you to either run it completely or to even do it maybe as like some mini mini series. Right. So maybe it would take you three or four or five sessions to do each section. You know, maybe yeah. more depending on how how exploratory you want to be and how much you want to add to and modify yourself. Because, again, number one rule we like to talk about with anything with, with D&D is that, you know, if you want to make some adjustments and customization based on the framework, by all means, you know, that's encouraged. It, right. helps, it helps make your game its own and stand out that way. And just from glancing over this, because this book just came out, so I've not been able to read all of it or anything, but glancing over the, the adventure and stuff, it seems pretty diversified in your types of things that you're going to be dealing with. There's stuff from uh, campus adventures, like yeah. tests. I saw there's uh, like t taking tests and yeah. stuff like that. Right. Then you have like masquerades and there's some other shenanigans as well to get into with that. So it could be really fun, interesting kind of setting to play in, like yeah. a college setting. Yeah. Magical college. I mean, mm. what do you know? I, I agree that this, from from what I've read through and I plan on doing some more in-depth reading of the, of the adventure, it, it does seem... Better than I thought it would be when I first because it felt almost like they were they, we got to put something in here for yeah. all this stuff we're cutting out. But I right. think it's it's pretty well done. Uh, the other thing that I will bring up, which is a little bit more specific, which is not you know wildly useful in game, the artwork in this book is on point. Yeah, there's, there's some great artwork in here. <laughs> but you know, there's there's not a ton of new monsters and stuff in there. There are there are you know a few. But the ones that are in here, are even the lower level stuff to the the you know the ancient dragons that are in the book that are the masters of the colleges, the artwork in there is really really well done, and I can yeah. tell that you know their art team is putting their time in for sure. And you know, shout out to the the art team on this book; they did a great job with the even the essentially the familiars you can get access to all the way up to the the biggest guys on there. Right, and as you kind of would have guessed, the last chapter is completely dedicated to friends and foes, yeah. monster stat blocks, NPC stat blocks, things like that. And as Alex was kind of saying, there is a, a good range, though the adventure is focused more around, you know, level 10 and lower. Yep. So a lot of them tend to fall in that category. Yeah. But they also have some higher CR things that are more NPC things yep. that you probably wouldn't interact with in the adventure so much, but you know they exist and they're out there in the world. And you yeah. could pull that into another campaign and just change the name or whatever. Sure. If you wanted to have a cool dragon that's yeah. that wasn't in Fizzbands. Yeah, right. yeah. So if there weren't already enough <laughs> options that they just introduced with that. <laughs> so yeah, lots of uh, stuff with the story side, which, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. Um, I'm always more of a fan of the... Uh, player option books like yeah the, the, the character of the player host stuff. yeah mm -hmm. uh just because i like to do my own stories typically as a dm i find it more enjoyable to just have complete free reign over everything that happens and then if things go way off the rails it's my world so i can <laughs> do whatever fix i want it. To <laughs> which, I, and i know people will say well you can just adjust the adventures and stuff too which is fine but i have this little this little part of me that's like 
this is not what's supposed to happen. You know what I mean? So that's why I try to avoid it because I don't want to just railroad people down. We're, stream, we're so. both analytical, structured people, him more so even than me. So if, if there's something set right here, it should stay within this framework. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> that's why I do my own. So I don't feel like I'm railroading the party by trying to force them into the adventures right. that are pre-done. But I know a lot of people do enjoy doing that because it reduces down the, on the uh, prep work significantly. And something else that I mentioned when he and I had an in-depth phone conversation about this on, <laughs> before we came to uh, record today was that for somebody, you know, like me who likes to, you know, break into DMing primarily to give him a chance to play so he has to, gets to see, hey, there's something else I get to do with this <laughs> game. Uh, I think a book like this that does have that little mini-series kind of structure that way would allow somebody like me, you know, to, without maybe just tweaking some things, able to get in there and, and DM like a couple of series to give, you know, give him a break, give your DM a break. Right. Or especially if you've never DM before, uh, having like a little miniature one-shot series. It's, they did the same thing with the uh, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica book. There's yeah. a... Yeah, like level one to three, I think adventure yeah. in there. They seem to be doing that a lot now, where they put like just a little short adventure. Yeah, in, built in every books. book yeah. almost. Which I think that that's a cool way if you kind of want to get your your feet wet in, in DMing. You've never yeah. done it before, and you're kind of scared to try to do the whole build from scratch thing. Uh, yes. It's kind of there, and you kind of learn your way through the process. I think this book does give a good opportunity with that, especially with the different segments and areas you could do a level five and six maybe take you three or four sessions kind of thing right yeah i do like that opportunity and kind of the last thing i want to kind of just bring up before we keep this uh, relatively short is relatively the whole thing with the unearthed arcana right yeah i feel like they had such potential with those subclasses i know a lot of people were upset about the how they functioned with you know bards and bards. wizards yeah, they get their subclass features at different levels, and bards right. only get uh, three, I think, or three levels. They get two at level six, I think, yeah. usually. Yeah. Um. So, but but they only get three, three six levels, and, three six and fourteen, three levels that they yeah. get something. Sometimes right. they get multiple things at those levels, depending on right. the subclass. But it really put a kink into the whole gearing mechanism system yeah. of the subclasses, uh, just in general, which people didn't like. But for them to cut everything yeah. seems a little excessive to me. Yeah. I mean, and Alex and I talked about this beforehand is why didn't they just keep – there's five five colleges. Just keep one subclass for each class in a different college. Yeah, because there, there are considered – I mean, outside of Warlock is Warlock's weird. There are five other full casters. So if you wanted to still have Warlock be one of them, you could have done a one for Wizard, Sorcerer, Bard – Druid, cleric. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Wizard, sorcerer, druid, cleric, bard, or warlock. There's six casters there. You know, take cleric out because you don't. If, you know, you don't yeah, think you need really, cleric as yeah. much because you would think of college school. You really don't for druid right. either. But yeah, wither bloom does feel very druid. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, Quandrix kind of feels a little druidy too, based on the spells they get access to. But anyway, that's beside the point. We can have it at a later date. But that's that was something that we talked about. I was like, why why did we not just let, just the sign? Okay. Lorehold College Bard, Prismari Sorcerer, you know. Right. It seems like a wasted opportunity to me. Yeah, like, if you, you, made, you made work. everything. Yeah, they, they made all of it, and they just scrapped all of it. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if they bring back some of those and rename slash reflavor them for yeah. maybe future books. Yeah. Uh, just because <laughs> instead of being of college like this, you can make them the exact same thing, but instead of being a Lorehold College Bard. They even say college. Yeah. Like, like Bard. bards. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. So you could have scared us all and made these like three bards and two sorcerers, but whoa, yeah, right, <laughs> that'd <have> been wild. <laughs> yeah, so th that's just my big hang up with this is I was uh, hoping for more character stuff on here, but especially the spells. Got yeah, them and yeah. imagine that that was the thing that really shocked me the most was that there was five new spells in a magic school, right? And we'll go over. The, I think the background feat thing is interesting. Yes. But it it does not replace the subclasses no. in any way, shape, or form. No. It's just a, a variation to try to appease some people while... I feel like they kind of had to put something in the character creation because they probably had the subclasses and they were like, this got, is it. Because it got, got gutted. gutted. <laughs> so otherwise... They're like, we need to do something. Otherwise, uh, character-wise, it's this. gutted. Yeah, otherwise it would have just been a, a straight-up adventure. And I think... They're, they seem to be straying further away from just straight adventures. They like to put something in there, just yeah. to, I guess to get players to buy the book sometimes. Yeah, right. I don't know. Uh, but then, this, this does feel like feel that way, where it's it's an adventure book that has some bits and pieces in yeah. it. If you're if you're just a player, uh, I don't think I could really recommend this no. just because it's so thin. 
But that's also one of the, one of the good things about D and D Beyond is you can buy individual pieces out of the yep. book. So if you really want to have access, if you really want to be an owl, and you know what, I get that owls are cool. Uh, you could just pay for the owl itself to have to pay for the whole book. So that right. option is there if you really, really wanted to. Yeah, that's, that is a nice option that yeah. they have introduced as well. Yes. But yeah, we'll keep it short there, keep it sweet. As best we know how. We will, uh, again, go over a lot of the different character option things yep. in more depth uh, and more discussion for some of them. Yes, be, uh, be, well. be prepared. It's, it's coming. So stay tuned. Uh, thanks again to our sponsors, yes. Hit Point Press. Stay heroic and get yours today at hitpointpress.com slash humblewood. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.